Okay, now we have epidemiologist Raywat Dionanda joining us because can, can you explain that last part to me? Because don't you have the same problem with vaccine antibodies as you do with natural ones in the sense that they don't stick around for very long? Well, first of all, in the general population, if you're infected naturally, there's going to be some people who get a not a very serious infection and they're not going to produce as many antibodies. And some people in general don't produce as many antibodies. With a vaccine, we can calibrate the insult such that you produce a large number of antibodies. That's the first thing. Second of all, a vaccine candidate probably has a booster shot built into it to, edge, mm. to again, produce more uh, antibodies. And third, a vaccine also produces immune response in that second arm of the immune system, the cellular arm, the T-cell arm. And all this stuff combines to probably give us a better shot at lasting immunity. But no matter what happens, we'll probably need regular COVID vaccine dosages like the flu vaccine annually or something like that. Right, because that was going to be my next question. When you raise the idea of booster shots, then is it in fact the case that no matter or which vaccine candidate we're looking at, in all likelihood, it will require shot a shot year after year after year after year. Yeah, I, I can't foresee any of the vaccine candidates offering lifetime immunity. I could be wrong, but that doesn't look like the way it's going to go. So the flu, you know, that changes regularly and that requires a different formulation. COVID is going to also mutate and that'll require not just a different formulation, but also probably additional boosters throughout our lifetime to make sure that we're sufficiently immune. Hmm. The new normal. Ray White, Dionanda, thank you so much. Thank you.